everybody, it's Bucky here. Like Roberto said, I'm with Top Dollar Home Offer. And tonight we're gonna to talk about how to break the debt cycle. The topic's called Breaking Debt. And he asked me to come up here and speak to you guys tonight to discuss how you can start your 2020 off right by not continuing to bury yourself in debt. Debt affects every one of us in this room tonight. Debt affects our parents, our siblings, our spouses. It's one of the biggest strains on any marriage or relationship. If you look at the divorce statistics, most of those stem from some kind of financial stress and they start looking elsewhere to escape that. So what is debt and why do we all have debt? If you read in the Bible, you are a slave to the lender if you have debt. So the first part about getting out of debt is understanding why you believe it's okay to have debt. Until you can change your mind, your mindset about debt, then you're always going to be in debt. Over my last 20 years of really being out on my own, went to college and started my own business and paid for school and all these things, but I also acquired debt. And I learned this the hard way. So you're not hearing from somebody that just has never had debt. When I was 22 years old, I went bust, meaning I had so much debt, didn't know what to do. I followed a plan that I thought was right, and I eventually got out of debt. The same thing happened about seven years later. Accumulated a lot of debt, went bust, and paid everything off. Unfortunately, <laughs> recently, a year or so ago, I went through a divorce and the last few years of the marriage, I was throwing a lot of money, debt money, bad money, at the marriage to try to save the marriage, which is not a good thing to do. So I ended up accumulating a lot of unnecessary debt, a lot of bad debt. And when I'm talking about debt, there is all types of debts out there. You know, there's different philosophies out there from Dave Ramsey to Robert Kiyosaki in terms of what debt is and what good debt is. And even your banker or your friends have, everybody has an opinion of debt. Raise your hand if you have a credit card. Okay, every hand went up. Raise your hand if you have more than $500 on your credit card. Okay, I'm glad you guys are here tonight. There is good debt, there is bad debt. But the good thing about my life is I've suffered through it. I accumulated bad debt, paid it off. Accumulated bad debt, I paid it off. I was debt free, accumulated some bad debt, and then this past year I paid it all off. What kept me from falling back into debt and what's kept me on the right path now is where I align myself spiritually. Meaning you have to have a spiritual compass inside you telling you yes or no. You have to be able to develop that mindset of delayed gratification. We are in an instant gratification world today. Meaning that everybody in this room wants something now. I mean, look at Amazon, right? Amazon started as a book company to sell used books or books online. About 10 years ago, they came out with Amazon Prime, right? Who in the past ordered stuff from a catalog or even maybe on the web and you never knew when the package was gonna come in? Maybe a week, maybe seven to 10 days. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you're cringing when the package doesn't get here in two days. You know, when I'm ordering stuff I'm off Amazon, I look for the Prime, typically. 
because I want it in two days, right? That's what helped bridge the gap with our online consumers is to be able to solve that instant gratification, like going to the store and being able to walk out with it today. Amazon hasn't done that yet, but they're very close with all the new distribution centers. You know, the one in Oklahoma City now, the one in Tulsa now. Soon we're gonna be able to have next day delivery on a lot of the goods that we order from there. So how does that have, what does that have to do with debt and how does that affect us? Well, we are consumed with instant, instant, instant gratification. We see what the Joneses or what the Insta famous people have on Instagram. Everybody's like, oh, I want that new car. I want this, I want this. Yet they never establish rules of the road for themselves. You know, story after story after story, you hear people about that received a sum of money and then they're broke, right? Why is that? Why do lottery winners go bankrupt within the next five, six years after receiving millions and millions of dollars? It's about not being disciplined. So you have to have discipline in order to get out of debt. And what I've learned from my three big setbacks is how to develop a plan that will hold me accountable to stay on track and to keep me focused on the greater goal. And the biggest thing that has kept me from falling back and it's going to keep me from falling again because I fell three times is having God as my compass using scripture from the Bible to say this is what's right this is what's wrong if you don't develop the right mindset there's no point in having a budget if you don't develop the right mindset there's no point in saying hey I want to get out of debt everything that you do in order to get out of debt starts right here and how do you change that mindset or how do you know where you're at today that's the problem is people don't have a plan they have no idea where they're at or where these habits came from by the age seven years old your relationship with money has been developed. And nothing against your parents or the way you were raised, but that typically is a direct reflection of where you're at today. If your parents were going through bankruptcy or in debt, all these things will be conditioned into you. It happened to me. My parents weren't wealthy. My parents accumulated a lot of debt. They were always in debt. They still are. And I've had, I had to break that cycle. And it's important for me to break that cycle because I want to have a generational change, meaning that I don't want my son, or my kids, or my future kids that I'm gonna have to be stuck in debt. I wanna teach them the principles now. My son's six years old. I want to teach him the principles of what money is. If you have kids in this room today, ask them, ask them, what is money? And hear what they say. They already have some kind of opinion of it. Sometimes they may have never seen money, right? Everybody's just swiping. Credit cards and debit cards have made it so easy not to be able to carry around cash.